in this week's episode of Triple T. So in your head, are you my in my brain? It's like slow, but it's like then like just instrumental, oh, in just head, upbeat, uh, and just. Do, do, do. In my head, I'm thinking like dee 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 the monkey's head on backwards and reattach all the stuff. It was easier to do it that way. That's how they did it. So it was the first head transplant, but they had to put the, this head is my back. back. And he, but they just see the monkey wake up oh. from me. And then he just realizes it's just it's like, ah! <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> so, you know, it was another gigantic hit of 1950. This is back. This is we're back to this again, where I, I hate how things are hits. <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was a number one hit by Gene oh. Autry in J January 7th, 1950. So after Christmas, kind of wake up out of his thing and just goes, ah! <laughs> You're a trophy husband. It's okay. I am. It's okay. It's, it, it's, it's ironic. You're like, if you hear me chewing... That's the problem. Was yeah, the chewing? That's what we got here with. That's how we got in this goddamn predicament. Uh, it's all right. Welcome back, everybody. The Triple T Show. Time. Tra what did we decide it was? What Sarah from Inner Pickle say that we should be? Time traveling. Uh, troubadours. Trio. I like trio. troubadours. Oh, troubadours. The Tr time travelers. There's so much stuff. Now, isn't it funny? One week we're flowing. One week I can't think of a goddamn thing. Either way. <laughs> Time traveling to a we year talk that brain we're... fog. <laughs> brain fog. That's a that's a thing. I feel like I have brain fog all the time. Ugh. Ugh. I don't know. But either way, we look cool in our triple T hats. I got like five or six left that I just found in the studio. If anybody wants one, shoot us a message. There's only thirty in the entire world, and you could be one of thirty. And I made up thirty. I don't remember how many I originally bought. I'm gonna say thirty. It's less than fifty, more than twenty. I'm gonna say twenty five. You could be one of twenty five. That's be pretty cool in the entire world. As one of these yeah. triple T hats, there's a twenty five is the, it's the max out. You're allowed to, you know, be at Leonardo DiCaprio's house and the amount of hats you can buy. Ooh, it's a hell like of that. an age, hell of a number. Uh, Nineteen fifty, pretty rough, but we did our best to do our research. And if obviously you're just listening, to the voice you're hearing, it's me, it's Matt, it's Beard Laws. Joining me is Burley. Goot's not here. He is spending time at a lake house with the family, and let's be honest, that's way more important to put in that family time, especially at a lake house. I I would love to be at a lake house right now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But yeah, that's where he is. Yeah. So safe travels, goo, and we'll be he'll be back next week to uh, to do whatever year that we come up with. We're jumping all over the place, and sometimes you get a year that you're like, ee, but we're very thankful for the person that sent in the year and uh, i think it's the last one from the dude network to send it over so big shout out to damon i don't know if you want to uh want, should we do the video you got anything else you want to chat about before we jump into no, uh... i want to know who to blame for this okay let's figure out who <laughs> to blame and thank here we go what's up guys damon from the dude network so we wanted a year for y'all to try to figure it out to talk about it. So 1950 it's a little bit before my time, but when I looked it up, there was a uh, childhood cartoon that started that same year. Maybe y'all can figure it out. Take it away, guys. I know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. And we will take it away. So thanks, Dave, yeah. for taking some time to send over the video in his defense. So maybe you can blame him. But I did say, if you wanted to send a video of a random year, potentially between 1950 and 1960... We'd appreciate it. We'd done the 30s. We did the 40s. We did the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. We hadn't done the 50s, the 2000s, or the 2010s. So he was like, all right, I got you. And he started with 50. When were the poodle skirts? Is that mm. the 50s? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there was a lot of... Uh... Wait, when did uh, Happy Times happen? Oh, Good Times. Poodle Good Skirts times. was 1950s. Remains one of the most mem uh, memorable symbols of the 50s in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking French. <clears throat> I assume that poodles are French. 
<laughs> they were just actually designed by the American singer and actress Julie Lynn Charlot in 47. It was a last Where's minute she Christmas from? outfit. Uh, it says American singer, so I'm going to say America. Mm. I don't know any of her stuff. Me? As Me will you not know any of the stuff from this year. <laughs> You know what? Maybe by doing this, though, we're, we hit a different audience. Maybe somebody's like, you know what? Oh, she was from New York. Hmm. Julie, Julie, Lynn, Charlotte probably made the wine. Uh, anyways, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we're going to hit a whole new audience. Maybe people that were, like, uh, born in the 50s, maybe people that grew up in the 50s, they're like, hey, what's this YouTube thing? What was cool in the 50s? And then they're going to find us. And being like, holy Maybe. shit, how did I stumble upon this? Well, I'm about to shit born? on 1950 pretty hard. Uh, yeah, I mean. Not, not really. but <laughs> Potentially we could, but either way, yeah. It's, it's an interesting year. There is some cool things that happen mm-hmm. this year. But either way, we're going to break down not only the sports like we do every year. We're going to break down the pricing. We're going to break down some movies. We're going to try to best our... You know, to hold it down because that's what Goot typically does. Burley hit the music, and then we got some random stuff that you might like. Should we fire this time travel machine? Am I getting a vein here? Ooh. Hey, uh-oh. Look at that. Uh-oh. Ooh. All right, let's Ooh. go. Fucking back, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, ready to hit this thing? I think so. Before we do, though. Let's just give a quick shout out to our friends mm-hmm. at Vermont Flannel. Check them out, vermontflannel.com. You can rock some lightweight ones. You can rock some heavy ones. Get prepared for fall. Fall's coming soon. It may not feel like it because where I'm living, it's 90 something percent humidity. I got that Texas weather up here in the east, even though it's not nearly as bad. Check out our friends and Milwaukee Pretzel. We love pretzels. You love pretzels. If you love pretzels, I feel like you've hit up Milwaukee Pretzels at some point in your life. If you haven't, what are you waiting for? Now's the time. There's not even any codes, but if you go to VermontFlannel.com, use code BEARDLAWS24, you're going to save yourself some money. Copper Johns, that's how our beards are looking good. Use code BEARDLAWS if you want. It's going to save you for the rest of the month of July. Not 10%, Burley. Not 20%. 35%. Jesus. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a that's stupid a, amount of a, money. That's a giant number. <laughs> that a lot of people haven't been taking advantage of, and that's fine. You can stock up on all your beard care products at 35% savings. Tyson probably isn't going to love it, but he said, I'll do it for you. So you guys can check it out. Beardlaws. Or yeah, beardlaws.com. The best beard products.com. Don't go to beard. I mean, you go to beardlaws, you'll find yourself at Copper John's eventually. Copperjohnsbeard.com. Use code beardlaws. Save 35%. We got a new friend of the show coming up next month in August. So if you're looking to pretend, this is the only clue I'm giving you. If you're looking to trim your beard or potentially your body hair, you're going to want to take advantage of this. Save your pennies. Next month's another banger. Oh, Check out the Rage and Pillage podcast. you got 150 episodes to catch up on, bitches, before he gets rolling again. And uh, Goot does some movie stuff with uh, the barrel-aged flicks. Don't know if he wants us to shout it out, but I'm pretty sure he... <laughs> does because he's still a part of the show and he's always he's that like humble guy like no no you don't have to shop check him out barrel age flicks for right, show all, that's all i got you got anything else no i don't i oh, well i got withdrawal symptoms but i'm gonna hit this button <sighs> <laughs> He does. Yeah, so anybody that's out there, they're not a friend of the show, but nicotine is a tough one to quit. And yeah. so when Burley did start the show, he said, if you hear me chewing, just let me know. He's chewing a lot of gum to get rid of chewing a lot of something else. Shout out to Trident White in the 110-piece bags. Yeah, this is about a two days supply of gum <laughs> for me right now. So if they want to, you know, send some shekels or just some bags, that'd be great. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, Ugh, all right. Porb. I'm going to hit this fucking time machine and go Let's back to it. a time before I was addicted to nicotine. Here we mm-hmm. go. Oh, it's not going to work. Oh, poor planning. Let me check the oil. I got you. Hold on. If, if you can't get it, <laughs> let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll try check it on my end. <laughs> check the oil. Well, it wasn't that. You know what, though? We do struggle a little bit when we're traveling way, way back. Yeah, that's because the problem. Because it's. It's a lot, and it takes a little more uh, juice and amps and watts, kilowatts. Okay, oil. we got oil. We got it. You forgot the oil I again? I did, no, I didn't. You know, you got to click it when you turn the uh, the gas tank mm-hmm. thing back on. It yep. didn't click. So, uh, poor pressurization of the rotary inline rotors. Yeah, and the and the freeze packs the, you know, that stuff. Mm-hmm. 
happens a bunch of times. But, um, all right, here it goes. We're going to go ahead and, uh, jujuge. Perfect we time we machine. We deduced ourselves <laughs> to 1950. Holy shit. Hopefully you're way more excited because if you're still here listening after we just deduced our way, 50, not 50s, 1950 specifically. Hopefully you're not uh, North Korean right now because we coming. Because <laughs> we coming. Again, 1950. No spoiler alerts to whatever the future has in potentially 2025 or 26. We can't see that far ahead, but uh, where do we even want to start? Um, let's uh, let's take out the music real quick. Um, okay. As I mentioned to you earlier, <laughs> uh, Bing Crosby has a chokehold on the music industry for most of the 40s and 50s. And, you know, and... <laughs> had a chokehold on his kids, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the man liked to beat his kids. Mm. Um, let's see here. Also, did you know there was a Gary Crosby? Oh, related? I think they're brothers. They had a few songs in 1950 together. Uh, but uh, they had a... It, it's not even that important. They're not good songs. But they had a couple <laughs> of good songs together. Um, or a couple of songs together. But... The number one song of 1950 is Good Night Irene by The okay. Wanderers. You know that one? Good Night. Uh, yeah, I know. It was The Wanderers? Yeah. Huh. Not Come on, Eileen. No. I thought I thought there was, um, the hell is the last name? Jenkins. Something Jenkins. Yeah, maybe it was The Wanderers. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making some stuff uh, up. Let's see here. Looking at it, it's called Good Night, Irene by... Yeah, it's... Oh, <laughs> well, someone typed it wrong. It's Gordon Jenkins and the Weavers, not the Wanderers. I was going to say the Wanderers. They put out some bangers. Yep, it's not. Yeah. Well, you know, I typed things in wrong, so correction. Hold uh, up. Hold up. Uh, you know what was another gigantic hit of 1950 this is back this is we're back to this again where i i hate how things are hits <laughs> rudolph the red-nosed reindeer was a number one hit by gene oh. autry in J january 7th 1950 so after christmas this Rough. song became a number one hit dude well you got to think technology was you know worse so by the time <laughs> christmas rolled around and these these people early in the tv game they were probably putting some stuff out and maybe it didn't quite hit until the seventh of january <laughs> i don't know bothers me so much yeah no, I mean, my how... favorite song name in 1950 was what if i knew you were coming i'd have baked a cake that was a song by El eileen barton and morty Kraft. If Long I knew ass you were name. coming. I'd have, have baked, baked a cake. I'd have, I'd have, I'd have baked a cake. Dude, that that is one of the very few times I've ever seen two apostrophes in a single word. Isn't that wild. Are you looking at that? I'd have, I'd have, I apostrophe d apostrophe v e. There's I'd've. no way that's proper English. I don't see. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's. I don't know. I've never seen that. I didn't know that that was in the title because I just have I apostrophe D. I'd oh, I'm looking at the Wikipedia. Oh, so that one spent two weeks on the the number one uh, at the number one spot in April fifteenth, nineteen fifty. I've never heard that song. Should we play like less than twenty seconds of it? For sure. I mean, do you th so in your head, are you my in my brain? It's like slow, but it's like the, like just instrumental, um, in just head, upbeat, uh, and just. Do, do, do. In my head, I'm thinking that like, deedle 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 um, pretty big channel, 14,000 subscribers. Hopefully they're not pissed at us, but, uh, we gave you some credit. We're going to play a little bit of this song. I, okay. Even that one has that double, uh, apostrophe out of, out of weird. 
right? Interesting. See, we are knowing some things. All right, let's play a little bit of this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's what I expected. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. She's she could probably do that wearing blackface and been <laughs> in a Shirley Temple movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I mean. Huh. Okay. So that reminds me. I I sent something over in the studio chat. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a real news, a uh, real news broadcast from the year 1950. Just skip ahead to like the one minute mark. Just okay. right, right in the middle of it. When did people stop talking this way for news? Oh, I wish we still did. All right, let me fire this up. It's odd. This is a review of the year 1950 on the YouTube. A Royal Command performance. Hollywood's Elizabeth Taylor and Conrad Hilton Jr. began their all too brief married life. While at home, Moira Scherer married Ludovic Kennedy, but not in the red shoes. When did they stop talking like that? <laughs> 1951. <laughs> it's gotta be right. I mean, you you hear about like because people would get their news from like going to a movie theater, right? Yep. So he so, he would go into the thing, but they yeah yeah they were, and, and they I were holding their hands. And, and I tell them C's. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a very odd way of speaking. I uh, I want to know where that started. And yeah. why and where it went away, you know. But we should have a show just on that. <laughs> the speech patterns of the early 1900s would want to listen to that. For <laughs> oh, sure. If we Very did long. the oh god, okay, we're gonna have to wait a few months. But for some reason, if we just started talking like that for an entire episode and did not tell anybody why we're doing it, <laughs> would be the funniest goddamn thing be. ever. <laughs> and with the way AI is, maybe we could just be like, make us sound like. They did in, on Radio 1950. And then that'd be a cool thing to just do that because allegedly you can go over to Beard Laws in Espanol and see a couple of clips in Spanish. And it's wild yeah, how it it's our out. voices talking Spanish. I showed the kids the other day and they're like, whoa, I didn't. I know you took four years of Spanish, but I didn't think you could <laughs> speak Spanish. And they're like, how do you say this? I was like, listen, I only do it for the camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and granted, they instantly were like, that's not you. That's AI. And I'm like, son of a bitch. Yeah. The oldest one was just like, yeah, yeah this is fucking stupid. But my not youngest even impressed. one, my six year old yeah. was like, oh. I was like, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, I just the oldest away. same here. They were like, yeah, yeah cool. AI. <laughs> like, I don't understand why. Listen, I, here's what I don't get, dude. I don't understand how these kids aren't blown away by AI. I get blown away by something AI every day. And I show my kid, and she's like, eh, okay. So is like, it maybe uh, similar to, like, say, 1950? Say maybe, not to jump ahead, and maybe it's not even this year, but, but say something cool like the color TV or, you know, something like that comes out. Their kids, they're just like, oh, yeah, this came out. Like, it's expected, and it's just like, yeah, it's the norm where, old, you know what I mean? They were just like, holy shit, like us. AI is a thing. It's But maybe because they don't utilize it, they probably can't over-utilize it in school. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe it's just like, eh, it's normal. Like, it's cool. I don't know. It's not a, not that big of a deal to me because uh, for us, it's like, oh. They're waiting they... for us to die so they can just could take over these people's kids, these kids' brains. Uh, just... hmm. Don't they read the news like Huey? Just like Lewis, the Ames like brothers Huey said Lewis? in 1950. Can anyone explain? Well, you know, Huey Lewis was born in 1950. Was he? And he read the news. Listen, so the number one hit, this, this is, I, I, I'm curious by this. It was Goodnight Irene, Gordon Jenkins, and the Weavers. Gordon mm-hmm. Jenkins and the Weavers also put out something, and I can't pronounce. I, I want you to, it's not a, it's not a, I just don't know. What's this right here? Number 13. Wait, are you sharing the screen? Shit, I was looking at Wikipedia. Oh, sorry. Uh, Zena, Zena, Zena. Zena, so it's a silent T, sons of bitches. I was like, to Zena? <laughs> I don't know if I can play it, dude. No, yeah, this shit gonna... has got to be uh, public domain by now. <laughs> has to. Uh, uh, let's see here. So we'll go here. We'll share this tab instead. Oh, it's a movie. Oh, shit. 
Turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Can't you hear the music playing in the city square? Senna, 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 senna. That banjo was on point, and then it got worse. I'm back out. Look at this guy, though. Uh, How much do you think yeah. he drinks a day? Quite a bit. I mean, to be fat back then. In the butt, was, in the I mean, eyes. He was, he was balling. And he's got the... the oh, yeah, he's boozing. Dude, he's got big old ears, huh? Look at the... That's a bad make. It almost looks fake. Doesn't it? Like he's wearing like a mask. The hair is weird. The the makeup. I don't know if it's ran in there. He almost. I don't know. Looks like what, he could be on like, the. Uh... Yeah, he looks like a clay person. Ooh, that's not a good look. Hmm. All right. Um, I don't need to talk shit about somebody that's passed, probably. Ah, uh, fuck him. <laughs> um, hold on. There was one more funny one. Um, the. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you read the name of this song by Red Foley? Right Where here under it? music. I've highlighted it right there. <laughs> that's a number one uh, hit. <laughs> the Chattanooga Shoe Shine Boy. Yeah, that's a number one hit, and I have to believe that there is some sort of racial things happening there. <laughs> I mean, it has to. It's 1950. <laughs> 1950, everything, all bets were off, dude. You were just allowed to say whatever, it seems like. The lyrics uh, I, I just pulled up here. Um, he's a great bundle of oh joy. He pops the boogie woogie rag, the Chattanooga shoe shine boy. He charges <laughs> you a nickel just to shine one shoe. He makes the oldest kind of leather like look like new. You feel as though you want to dance when he gets through. He's a great big bundle oh joy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the it's whole a wonder song? that the oh. rag don't tear the way he makes it pop. You ought to see him fan the air. With his hoppity, hippity, hippity, hoppity, hoppity, hippity, hop. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> Hip hop. Wait, we're we on to something here. Did they, is this the first of mention of hip hop? Oh, <laughs> it might. I kind of want to hear that specific right, line. Skip of this. to that part. <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh, man. We got some pretty good birthdays here, too. You want to list them here? Here's the song. Here, it's got to be. Oh, he does not be. look like I was expecting him to be. There it is. Someone's tap dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the, I mean, they got a, why they got so many people in this band. This guy's got two guitars on his lap. They got the accordion back there. Accordion. Uh, somebody's, I couldn't really see what that person's playing because they're just focused on this guy. But uh, maybe that, oh, that's a stand up uh, bass. I don't, I don't the, know. If, is this uh, the, um, what's the slide thing that they play in the Westerns? The slide guitar? Yeah. Is that the, doesn't that look like a slide it guitar? Looks like. Oh, look at that. Um, oh, shit. That's fun. That's real fun. Got some drums um, back there. Man, this is... These guys, Red Foley. Red Foley and the No Melanins. <laughs> <laughs> when the cowboy sings. And the hibbity hoppers. The hibbity hoppity hibbity hoppity hibbity hoppity 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 hoop. Um, <clears throat> all right. All right. We got a pretty good, pretty good... And I just took the top... This is how many. There's a lot of good birthdays this year, 1950. Mm -hmm. I just took the top people. There's way more than this that were like names: Doctor Phil, Ooh. Stevie Wonder, Ooh. Tom Petty, Bill Murray, Martin Short, William H Macy, John Candy, oh shit, Ron Perlman, Julius Irvin, Dr. and J. Ken Griffey Sr. Shit, that's a that could be one of the the top birthdays that we've ever had. That's a lot of birthdays, yeah. That of like name people, you know. Wow. Um, I can't believe uh, Adam Ray's that old. <laughs> He's a fucking genius, <laughs> dude. He's a goddamn genius. I hate that I don't like his stand up, but all his characters are so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, fucking speaking of baseball though, Jackie Robinson. Signed mm -hmm. the highest contract in MLB history at thirty-five thousand dollars to the fucking Dodgers. 
Wow. And uh, he played with them until he fucking retired. Yep. And speaking of that, you're probably thinking, $35,000. Uh, well, let's do the prices of things in 1950. Probably could have came up with a better title yeah, for that. Fun thing like the money roundup. Yep. <laughs> you know? ching, 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 money. Yeah. All right, AI, let's We're get it. We're such fucking now. cheese dicks, dude. <laughs> 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 Prices of things in 1950. If you wanted a house, it was approximately seven thousand three hundred and fifty-four dollars. Jackie Robinson could have bought roughly four houses with that signing. Uh, if you wanted a car, it was about fifteen hundred bucks. Uh, example: a Ford, fifteen hundred bucks around that time. I don't know why that was the example, but shout out to Ford, Michigan. Ish gallon of gas. It was about twenty-seven cents. If you wanted a loaf of bread. It was about fourteen cents. Dozen eggs, sixty cents. A gallon of milk was roughly 82 cents. A stamp was roughly 3 cents. You want to go to the movies? About 50 cents. You could go watch that. Average annual salary was about $3,200. So Jackie Robinson was getting about 10 times the amount of an average salary, which I have to imagine in sports these days when they're getting millions and the average salary is probably, what, 40, 50 grand, maybe less. I don't really know. Doesn't do seem think? to be 10 times as much as a good deal. I just thought of something just now like. I, I know I do this. I'm sure a lot of people do. Is every month you go through your bills and you look at what you owe, what you, what you need to pay, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have the luxury of the internet and all that good shit. Yes, we do. Back then, people had to have factored in stamps to their budgets. True. That's crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. And has a, I've never, I don't think I've ever mailed a bill. I've mailed letters for sure, but I've never mailed mm -hmm. a bill. Like, how do you factor in if it's going to be late or not? What's the late? How do I you think, avoid that shit? So I have, I've had to mail a couple in, in a long, uh, what seems like forever ago, and it was kind of the same thing. Like, if you knew your bill was due on, let's say, the 15th, you mm -hmm. knew roughly three to five days it's going to hit that post office in there. So you just gave yourself an extra week or two. I would try to do it two weeks. So, like, if it was the 14th or 15th, my thing was done, I'd try to mail it out on the 1st. So, I'd okay. have to imagine roughly then, you know, you would do the same exact thing. But, like you said, yeah. So, say your bill's 12 bucks. Well, now it's 1203 or 1205, depending on, you know, how much stamps are in stamps. I haven't bought stamps in a long time. But when I do, I always try to buy the forever stamps when I was doing them. So, I'd get a roll of forever stamps. That way, they were good forever because they constantly go up. So, you know, if it's worth 25 cents and then shit, next thing you know, it went up two cents. Now you got to go and be annoying and go buy two cent stamps and add it to there. So you're putting multiple stamps on there. It's a weird thing. So that three cents is worth roughly four, 39 cents now. Okay. Yeah. Which you're like, oh, that, that's a, it's an extra 39 cents. But if you got to mail out 10 bills, mm -hmm. that's 390. You got to do it every month. That's an extra little bit added to. And every, everybody's had that one rough month where you. Uh, where you're holding on for dear life in your bank account, and that for some reason twenty cents comes out, and then you're paying a thirty dollar overdraft fee. We've all been here. We've all been there. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm. So yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Um, we got. You know what a Corona graph is? Mm, I don't think so. I've heard of Corona the beverage. Well, this was pro before that. I'm pretty sure those people down <laughs> below the border stole this, or at least <laughs> they have a different type of Corona. Who knows? Nobody knows. Who knows? Nobody fucking knows. The 50s. The Corona graph was invented fucking to be able to see the sun. Now they can Oof. look at like the sun doing shit. If you look oh. at some of like the earliest pictures, I don't know if you can find them. Um, I should have. I need it's to start okay. I'm, I'm better. Like, right now, yeah. Pretty fucking neat. Um, that they came up with this, and you got to remember, this is pre us going to the moon, if you believe that kind of stuff. <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this is, I mean, I just put the first, this is not, it can't be uh, the first ultraviolet imaging of the sun's middle, but this is an example of the corona stuff. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the oldest shit is just like black and white, and it's not yeah. pretty. No. Um, but, um, then not long after that, we're like, that's not good enough. Let's send a uh, a rocket 100 miles up into the air. And now you can see the Earth's curvature for the first time. Never seen that before. Now we actually have proof that the Earth is 
a ball. Wink. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Brother, stand strong. <laughs> um, where do you stand on that? Are you married to the ball, Matt? I, I don't really give a shit. Are you married to the to? ball? Hmm. Well, yeah, he's supposed to. I mean, the government's hiding it from me, and we don't know why. Aren't you a little curious? Nah. Why? What are they protecting? I'm, I'm sure they're protecting a lot of shit, and I, I don't know. They're not. <laughs> hopefully, they just keep protecting me. Ish. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Let me clear my throat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, uh. Shit. Now that the people uh, are listening, because we mentioned the government, what's up, government? Help us get some likes and views and downloads, baby. Word. Appreciate you watching this. Smash that like button. Hit that little <laughs> bell to get an alert every time we upload something, dog. Yeah, I'm Agent 69. Talking, yeah, Agent 69. You're my boy. You're my Ooh. boy, 69. Um, do you know about the Great Brinks robbery? Um, Not like in detail, but I've heard of it. Pretty interesting. It's like 11 dudes. Mm-hmm. Plan this uh, this uh, robbery at the Brinks like building, and they just walked in. They walked in with like twelve sets of keys, walked door to door to door, and finally made it to the central part, and just tied up the fucking workers, and stole like it was a little over a million dollars. I don't know what that puts them at as in like twenty twenty four money, but they just disappeared. They fucking, it took them a year and a half to fucking, uh, to plan it out and 13 minutes to knock it out. Speaking Just of 13, a million bang, dollars bang. in 1950 is equivalent to about $13 million today. So each guy got a little over a million bucks. Boom, bang, boom. ba bam, 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 bam. <clears throat> There's some peeps. Yeah. Oh, $1.5 million. Okay. So I thought it was a million bucks. Okay. Yep, Pretty wild, dude. 1.5 million. Hold up. But then this one. <laughs> nice. 2.7 Brinks. Brinks is just, they're just getting it no matter we what year. We don't know what we have. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know robberies were possible in 1950. Jesus. <laughs> oh, Michael Jackson did it? Oh, I believe that. <laughs> I believe that. Look at that look. Hmm, Jesus. At least they were smart enough to wear masks, I guess, right? Look at this look. That's going to haunt you. Smart move, dude. I mean, think about it. If you uh, can't say I wouldn't think about it pretty hard. You know how hard and much like more difficult it would have had to be, though, to find this out, especially back then. I mean, nowadays with cameras everywhere and the technology, it's like really hard to get away with just about anything. But in the 50s, you'd have to imagine <clears throat> it must have been quite. I mean, even in that last picture I showed, all of the agents and stuff are like smiling their ass off. Yeah. Like we. We did it. We got oh, dude. it. One point two million dollars in cash, and then another one point five million in checks and money orders and other securities. That's wow. how shitty shit was back in the dude in twenty twenty four. Right now, that those checks and money orders are as good as trash. Yeah, don't even try to cash those in. <laughs> you're gonna get mm, caught. Hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Even large sums of money that you're gonna steal are gonna have some kind of pack or tracking or something. I mean, you can put uh, not to not to you know anybody that's here from the fifties. You can put an Apple tag on just about anything, and you're gonna get found. Let alone what technology the banks do have that they don't tell you about. It's pretty. Dude, uh, there are um, entire businesses here in Houston that are off the books. That you know, five hundred bucks, I'll pull all the trackers out of your vehicle. Mm-hmm. And the amount of trackers in your vehicle, you think probably one from the dealership. Nah, dude. Because now all these dealerships and stuff are, they're literally tossing an Apple tag in your fucking uh, door panels and shit like yeah. that. Just they'll have you. So mm-hmm. this guy, he, he, these guys that um, that I know of, well, they have a service. Well, they will basically disassemble all your vehicle and get all those trackers removed. And then, you know, if you decided that you didn't want to pay for your vehicle anymore. They can't come get it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or if he stole a vehicle, let's say that. Oh, allegedly. Forbid. God forbid. <laughs> um, let's see here. Yeah, that's uh, a wild robbery. That's a cool piece. That might even, that, that should be potentially even maybe a your town runoff. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. It's yep. a pretty good one. How they just, a year and a half. That's all, dude, a year and a half. 
it, let's be honest here. In a year and a half, I would have found reasons to cut other people out of the deal. Oh, yeah. But, you know, 11 guys to pull that off just seems like a lot. That does seem like quite All a you bit. need, I mean, if movies have taught us anything, you need one smooth talker, you need a driver, you need a, a limber Asian man <laughs> to get into the to air ducts. Um, what else? <laughs> You have to avoid the lasers. You need to be able to avoid the lasers, but that's where the limber man comes in as well. True. Um, and then you need a hot chick. So five people. Five people. The, the hot chick is the distraction. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, you need some kind of technology person. Maybe you could have the technology person be the driver as well. These days, you, well, need, then, you need a figured, techie involved. Okay, let's say six people because you make that the inside man. Yep. Boom. You probably need somebody law enforcement on your side, though. Right? To really have an inside guy, or at least maybe an employee. What year are we pulling this off? Uh, true. I don't know. Let's stick with fifty. Oh, in 1950, so. I'm walking in to the Brinks building with you. We're killing everybody and not getting caught. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think police are a thing yet in 1950. It makes you wonder. We should, you know what I mean? And I know the idea just came here, but. There had to be a lot of bank robberies and stuff like that that happened in the in 1950 that were just like okay, yep. Yeah, like when was uh when was Bonnie and Clyde and all that shit? Oh, I don't know. You know? I think it was. It had to have been around that time, 40s, 50s. Bonnie and Clyde was. Let's see here. There's no cameras. There's no DNA. Whatever. They were born in 1910. Died in 34. Okay, so not long before that, you could be a bank robbing couple and go on for years. Quite a bit. And if, I mean, they they did, would... if they just kept their fucking mouth shut and not tried to be the most badass, they probably would have got away with it all. Probably, yeah. They made the movie in 67. Hmm. Interesting. I'm just That's saying pretty... DNA, DNA shit didn't happen for a while. Do you mean you could have gotten away with so much shit? I mean, even doing stuff, you know, with the Yorktown, a lot of the stories in the 70s and 80s, they were still getting away with a lot of stuff because the DNA technology was not around. Then you you fast forward 20, 30 years before. No. I mean, dude, imagine getting into a fight with your neighbor. Like, and just like, man, I wish I could just kill him. Like, that would have been a much more realistic thought to have back in the 50s. I bet like, all right, I'm just going to figure out where to take him. You know, yeah. it's like. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. There was there was a lot. Oof. What a, people think that they have it rough these days. No. Yeah, no. dude. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Wild. Time. Okay, so that that goes. That's a plus side. Plus side mm-hmm. for living back in the past. Hey, we found a positive in fifty. Yeah. We found some good. We've found a lot of positivity so far. <laughs> Get away with murder and crime. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and people being born. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, your, okay. You know, speaking of banks and some stuff, though, the first credit card was uh, came around in February of 1950. It was the Diners Club uh, issued its first credit card. Ni- February 1950, uh, revolutionizing the way people handled credit and payments. That's a good or potentially a bad thing. A lot of people on credit card debt. That's interesting. Now that, now that okay, I've never heard that term used outside of like a movie, like an older movie. They're like, at my Diners Club card. Yeah. That's what that is, huh? Yep, the Diners Club. Yep, they issued its first credit card. That's pretty well. Oh, speaking of DNA, too, before we get way past there, the discovery of the DNA structure apparently was first discovered, they said, in 53, technically, but the important research and understanding actually started to begin shape in the 50s, paving the way for the genetic. Everything before that was free game, dude. You could just shoot your goo everywhere and nobody would know. Nobody. Oh, man. That's... Pretty. What a time to be alive. What right? a Dude. time to be alive. <laughs> uh, going full circle, though, Damon, when he said, hey, I want to pick 1950, he did mention a potential, whether it was a comic strip or whatever. Speaking of loads of potential, peanuts. <laughs> nothing to do with loads. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Schultz comic strip Peanuts featured the beloved characters like Charlie Brown and Snoopy. They made their debut October 2nd, 1950, and probably was, if not the most popular, but one of the most popular, you know, comic strips of all time. I wonder who was number one till then. And then goddamn Charlie Brown showed up and ruined, rained on their parade. 
like Marmaduke or something. <laughs> you know, like Marmaduke took a major hit to to the Peanuts crew. Um, it's, it's so just quick search on the Googles. It says it's difficult to say which comic strip was the most popular in the forties because I'm just going to go there. But here are some of the ones that apparently were there. Um, this this pulled up, yeah, comic strip, the Daring Mystery Comics, Red Raven Comics, Human Torch Comics, Mystic Comics, Double Action. None of these I've heard of. Flash Comics, The Flame, Red Dexter of Mars, The Blue Bolt, and Weird Comics. Number one. Yep, hate all those. Yeah, never really heard of any of them. And just to show though. I mean, we're pretty much old enough. Like you, do you remember some stuff in the newspapers, right? Like mm-hmm. comics Funny and papers, stuff like yeah. that. Taking some of the uh, the putty stuff, putting it on the yeah. papers, yeah. and being able to still see them. I mean, all you really makes kids you wonder the... what was going all over our skin, huh? Uh, I don't try not to think <laughs> about that. That's all the microplastics in our balls now, dude. Yep, all of us grew <laughs> up with all the the silly putty or whatever it was, and the plastic eggs, and now all of you kids, you have it in your DNA because of us and our parents. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Better than uh. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, uh, <laughs> moving on. Um, um what, I mean the the first U.S. commercial television network, the American Broadcasting Company, which is ABC, began broadcasting in color television in January 1950. So that's mm-hmm. the wait. The launch of the first commercial is that television the first, network. Oh, that's the very first commercial. Sorry, a very first uh, color commercial. The first U.S. commercial television network, so ABC, they began all of their broadcasting in color in January 1950. Not to say that they were the very, f- um, yeah, the first commercial television network, so the first TV network. I mean, there was probably other stuff that was out there in color, but the first network to start broadcasting everything they had in color. That had to have been like witchcraft, dude. Pretty wild. In. <laughs> When was the last time we had something really fucking buttfuck our brain? Like a color TV probably did back then. AI. When was the last time something happened? <laughs> but, I mean, it did it, though? I mean, it kind of <sighs> took me over for a while. I mean, seeing myself be able to hear my voice speak fluent Spanish. That is pretty. That was verified by you and someone you know that it's actually fairly accurate. Like, Well, that that's that's just a you specific. Like, dude, an entire generation uh-huh. of people were mind fucked. As soon as ABC went, oh, yeah, it's in color, too. You know? Yeah, that's, that's, and wasn't the first remote control invented in 1950 as well? I believe. I believe you. I mean, that's what my notes said. Um, <laughs> Robert Adler and Eugene Polly invented the first television remote control called the Lazy, or called Lazy Bones for the Zenith Corporation. It's called the Lazy Bones? That's what it, that's, that's what hilarious. I was That's hilarious. They're really just calling people out back then. Now it's probably like the convenient plus. But back then it was like, you lazy fuck. (laughs) Yeah, Zenith Radio Corporation, now a subsidiary of LG Electronics USA, invented the first TV remote control in 1950, called it Lazy Bones. It was a wired remote that connected to the TV and allowed viewers to turn the TV on and off and change the channels. There was a motor in the TV operated the tuner by rotating it clockwise or counterclockwise. That's why buttons on the remote were pressed. That's wild, isn't it? Let me see, let's see if we can pull up a picture. I want to see this bad boy, yeah. and if they show just like a normal healthy person using it, or if it's somebody like that's a, like almost in a coma, <laughs> so they how they justify it. <laughs> oh wow! Look at this little wire here. Hey, we don't got to get up. Dad's sitting there. Give me the remote, kid. We're the I mean, lazy that, bones. We're the lazy bones. Flashmatic too. Oh, this one. This must have been after. But that's that's, that's got IR or something. Yeah. yeah. Now Zenith adds Lazy Bones remote control to the Black Magic television. Look at this. Wild, dude. If uh, no, never mind, I probably wouldn't. It says, "If I had a bunch of money, it'd be cool to like have old shit." But then it's just piled up shit. Never mind. Piled up shit. That's <clears> old. <throat> that's yeah. heavy. That you have to pay way too much money. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, it's probably not you getting rid of it. It's going to be the kids or whoever else is going to have to. Oh, for sure, Jesus, yeah. Dad collected all this shit. Dad really <laughs> wanted old black magic TVs. He has 150 <laughs> of them. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> and it's 150 pounds. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, to an extent, it would be pretty cool. but It'd be it'd be cool for a little bit. And then, but, all right. yeah, this I follow is... this weird fucking kid on, um, on Instagram and... 
he lives his entire life like it's the 1940s. He's like in his early 20s. He has like the most intense uh, autism you've ever seen, but he has he's just enough to like live on his own. But Jesus. holy shit, his whole entire house is all like 1940s, you know, record players and yada. Dude, it's, I'll show it to you later. It's crazy. He walks around in like three piece suits and top hats and dumb shit. Like just for videos or like all day? This is how he lives every... his life. Interesting. He drives like a uh, literally drives a Model T to his job every day. You know, <laughs> fucking crazy how shit. Do, how, I wonder how he makes it through his job, not trying to like having to step out of the forties. Like if that really is a struggle. I uh, I don't know. Let me look. Interesting. At, let me see if I can Google his name real quick. Vamp. Yeah. All right. So while he's doing that, there was this was something that was potentially on the Yorktown podcast as well. We covered the discovery of the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine. So in 1950, an amateur treasure hunter named Jacob Waltz claimed to have found the legendary lost Dutchman's gold mine in the Superstition Mountains of Arizona. We covered it pretty in depth. It was a wild story. A lot of murder, a lot of mystery. So again, that was a wild one. Go check it out. Just Google Your Town Podcast, the lost Dutchman's gold mine. While Bobby right. is uh, looking up this. You find I'm him? Sorry. No. no okay. Hey, while you're doing that, um, something that was just random was the first organ transplant by Richard Lawler. He did a kidney transplant on Ruth Tucker at the Little Company of Mary Hospital in Chicago, which that's pretty wild in 1950 to be able to swap organs. Not sure the success of it, but I have to imagine if they are putting it in there, old Ruth Tucker was living a better have you, life. Have you ever seen the footage of when they swapped the brains on the monkeys? No. Or they swapped heads on the monkeys, sorry. Oh shit, that's even wild. No. I'm going to have to find it later, but um the yeah, and for some reason it was easier for them to put the monkey's head on backwards and reattach all the stuff. It was easier to do it that way. That's how they did it. So it was the first head transplant, but they had to put the this head is my back. back and he <laughs> But then you see the monkey wake up oh. from me, and then he just realizes it's just it's like, God! <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> Jesus, it's the funniest thing because you just you see kind of wake up out of his thing, he just goes, God! <laughs> just like any of us would react. <laughs> Did it live? Could it live like that? Yeah, they, they had it alive, and then you know, it was. What There's do you do no at way at that point. And once they're done, they're just going to let it live out its days. They just, yeah, they, they put it down. It'd be like, uh, it'd be like trying to like those people that for whatever reason thinks it thought it was cool back in the day. I don't know if this is still a thing to play video games inverted. Like I had buddies. that's like, I'm going to play inverted. Like you'd have to do everything backwards. You know what, what I mean? What do you mean like, inverted? Like, so up is down, like pilots up is down, down. You know what I mean? Left is right. Left. Like there, that was an option in some video games back in the day that you could, well, I want to play yeah, inverted. Well, I play on in flying games. I, yeah, but they would I do it on inverted. shooting games, everything. Oh, oh like, no, I, feel I play like... inverted on flying games for sure. Up is but down, is it down inverted is up. because that's how it's supposed to be, or you're inverting it to make it normal in flying? Because when you fly, it's it's all backwards. Yeah, I want to go down is up, up is okay. down. That's how I play when it's okay, a flying game. So that'd game. be normal flying. Yeah. But they must switch it so it's the other way in flying. Because when you uh, play Top Gun back in the day... I mean, not 1950, but it was that way. Like your brain, you just naturally had to play inverted or mm. to get it to work where, yeah. But well, I knew buddies if, that, if they're doing that just to be difficult, I don't understand that. I knew buddies. That's the way they do. Oh, I got to switch my controls real quick. And I'm like, huh? So that was a shooting game. Any, any games that we were playing, they played in. Then next you grab the controller and you're like, what? My brain doesn't work like this. Like, I don't know. Maybe there's yeah. did, or maybe they just train their brain to be different. I don't know the reasoning. But anyways, yeah. it's probably some weird fucking like, uh, what's it called? I like, I don't know. My brain is not firing on all. Sorry. No, it's OK. It's OK. It's, I see uh, you popping some gum. Uh, speaking of gum, <laughs> a lot of athletes chew gum. Bragging. I was looking for the word bragging. Brag. To That's brag, how to bad boast. I am right now. I couldn't think of the wow. word bragging. This sucks, dude. It sucks. <laughs> hey, you're going to get through this. Uh, let, let's cover sports. Let's all go right. ahead and say the uh, here's the list of champions of all major sports in 1950. Let's jump to football, probably the most recognizable sport. It was, uh, I hate to say it, but Philadelphia Eagles. They won it in 1950. They defeated the Detroit Lions 17-7, and it was actually the NFL championship game. Uh, major League Baseball, again, not a great thing for me in the 
the people that I like in sports, but the Yankees, they beat the Phillies. Look at that Philly. They had a good little year. They had a team in the meet in the uh, MLB <laughs> championship and NFL there, but they got swept for nothing by the Yankees and the NBA. It was the Minneapolis Lakers beat the Syracuse nationals four two in the NBA finals. Really wish Syracuse still had an NBA team. Cause that's the closest sports city to me. Is Syracuse a big place? Uh, not huge. No, but it's it's the the one of the bigger. Obviously, you can't compare to New York City and some places like that. But it's a it, then it was even bigger. But I mean, when, they did, had like, when did they lose their team? Uh, I don't know when they lost it to be honest. So I'll look it up real quick. But I mean, you have like Carrier, the inventor of the AC. They had Carrier in there. Hmm. There's even a Carrier Circle, the Carrier Dome. So I no mean, shit. that was a very big, obviously, place for production. I'm assuming that's shut down. But uh, let's see, Syracuse Nationals NBA. They're obviously, I think, uh, actually, I wonder if the Sixers ended up there. They officially leave central New York. They broke, the family broke through in 1955. Let's see here. What happened? Okay. The, they ruled the NBA as champions in 1955, winning the title. And they played in the Onondaga War Memorial, which was a cool place. Uh, the 1963, they departed syracuse to become the philadelphia 76ers hmm. yep so 63 was the last year so hey rob you're welcome for your nba team. <laughs> son of a bitch but uh and minneapolis lakers obviously that was uh, another team that was gone nhl team that's still around detroit red wings they beat the rangers in seven games they beat them college football oklahoma sooners they were the um, ap champions college basketball this one is wild to me. The CCNY Beavers, the City College of New York, was the NCAA basketball <laughs> champions, and they beat the Bradley Braves. Shows you how far college basketball. Can you imagine a city college winning the Division I yeah. college basketball championship? Well, that, I, don't, I don't know if you – that reminds me of um, – I think the World Cup was this year. I saw this earlier, so that's why the only reason I know about the World Cup. Apparently, the U.S. beat England in the World Cup one to nothing. Wow. It was considered one of the biggest upsets of all time, and then the the U.S. didn't qualify for the World Cup. I guess till 1990. Wow. After that, so 1950 Good. to 1990 was you know, pretty dry. I wonder if that's why the U.S. doesn't give a fuck about soccer because they're just not good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's a leading theory now. That's now a leading theory right now. You just heard it here first, folks. Mm -hmm. We just invented that. Yep, that's the leading We're theory. Huge. We sucked at soccer for fifty years or forty years. Thus, that's why a whole generation of people doesn't give a fuck about soccer. Yeah, and it's confusing because it's soccer here and football everywhere else, and we already have football. Yeah, we which made is it also better. Confusing. Yeah, we, we made, made it better, better, but we don't even use our feet. We how do how else do you get across the uh, the end zone? You throw it and you catch it. And what are you on the whole time? The grass. Your footsies. Grass ball. You're on your footsies. They call it footsie <laughs> ball. Well, back here in 1950, <laughs> the, 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 the invention of the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got about seven minutes left. Let's run through the top. Let's run through. You want to do the top ten or the top five? Let's go top ten because I haven't heard a goddamn thing about this. And sorry, Goo, again, if I butchered your segment, but we're going to talk about the top ten movies of nineteen. Let's play a game called Have You Heard of This One? Okay, number ten. <laughs> All right. Gun, uh, gun okay. Crazy. Uh, haven't heard of this one. Directed but have by you, Joseph have you, Lewis. Have you heard of this one? It's called Winchester 73. <laughs> I haven't heard of that. I've heard of Winchester. A lot of guns. <laughs> Number eight, In a Lonely Place, which is unfortunately where you are after giving up Zen. <sighs> yeah, I've never heard of that one. But have you heard of Father of the Bride? No. Well, there was a popular movie. Was, Steve, was it called? Uh, Steve Martin. Yeah. yeah is that, is totally that different movie. <laughs> same, same name, though, right? Same name, though. Okay. Oh, I wonder how that royalty battle went. <laughs> this I don't know. one, get you're going to get Vincente Minnelli. Yeah, Vincent. <laughs> yeah, your royalty really missed out. But number six, this one was interesting, called The Asphalt Jungle, directed by John Huston. Never, have you heard of that? Uh, the Asphalt Jungle. 
I mean, is that before the invention of concrete? Uh, they had to have concrete, right? We should look up the. I'm gonna let's look. Because I've heard of the concrete jungle, where dreams are made of. Uh, in concrete New was invented. York. Oh well, this isn't gonna be there because according to this, six six thousand five hundred BC is when concrete structures were. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, so let's go. <laughs> when was asphalt invented? Uh, six hundred twenty-five BC. Not very helpful, Google. I mean, it yeah. is, but the uh, the use of asphalt started a thousand <laughs> years before the founding of USA. Mesopotamians are created for the first use of asphalt. Good for them. Fuck you, John Houston. The Asphalt Jungle movie of nineteen fifty. Yeah, uh, directed by John Huston with Sterling Hayden, Louis Keller, and a bunch of people I've never heard of. It's rough, dude. A major heist goes off as planned. So back to the... Ooh. You shouldn't have called him John Heiston, am I right? Oh, did it have Marilyn Monroe in it? No. <laughs> Maybe it was remade with Marilyn Monroe? Uh... Here, let's was she alive back then? Yeah, she uh, would have been. When was she banging Joe DiMaggio? I mean... Right around. I don't know that either, but so this is the reason. So this is the asphalt jungle, the city uh, under the city. A major heist goes off as planned, but the double cross is bad luck and solid police work cause everything to unravel, which is ironic because we covered Brink there. Hmm? Hmm. Maybe they saw this movie and was like, we can do it better. That's easy. Yeah. Marilyn Monroe was wonder, Angela. Well, I wonder Finley. if she was a star in this. She's, I haven't heard of a lot of these people. Wait, yeah. scroll down, scroll so, down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Keep going. It's a western. She, oh, that's something else. That's Never something mind. else. Yeah, but yeah, right here. I mean, she was she was in it. She was Angela Finlay. Yep. Speaking of Finlay, hey, we hats. got Finlay. Everything just keeps coming full circle. <laughs> but the reason I said that, so if I go back right here, I mean, she's listed on ah, this one, okay, but not on the other one. Well, but, I wonder if later on when she became the biggest star they tossed her on as the smart that's a cool yeah. artwork right there especially for like once a uh, home video became a thing because mm -hmm. that doesn't come along for another 20 years probably that's wild yeah huh, what's um, coming in at number five the top five <clears throat> movies of 1950 all right harvey directed by henry coster you heard of that one nope ah, you're up rashomon directed by Akira Kuro... Why did I get the hard one? Kurosawa? Kurosawa. Oh. No, I haven't heard of that shit. Me neither. Now, here's one I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure we might know. <clears throat> How is this not number one? I don't know. Cinderella. I heard of that Directed one. by three different people, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Clyde Geronimi, <laughs> Wilfred Jackson, and Hamilton Luske. Huh. Is that, is that this one. the Disney... Cinderella. That's what. Uh, let's see here. Let's pull up the. Unless Disney got the rights after. Here's the Wicca Wicca Wikipedia, 1950. Walt Disney Cinderella. Yeah, there you go. Produced by Walt Disney. Released by RKO Radio Pictures. Directed love by story three different with people. Music. Wow. It was the greatest since Snow White. Color by Tech Technicolor. There we go. We heard a one. I've tried to show my kid snow uh, cinderella recently and she's just like the original one or just any of the remakes the uh, well, you mean the og like you know disney put put them out in like 4k or whatever try to yep. okay maybe <sighs> she could give a shit yeah well i mean I was disney like, was crushing it they went from what bambi to snow white to pinocchio or i don't know the order but then cinderella <laughs> yeah i didn't realize all these movies are so fucking old so old that brings mm -hmm. us to number two sunset boulevard I don't think Never I've heard, heard of, of it. that one, but uh, I think I feel like Sunset Boulevard is an iconic place. I've been to Sunset Boulevard, if that helps. Huh. Yeah, it was uh, Desperate for Cash. Screenwriter Joe Gillis had a chance meeting with a faded silent film star. I don't know. It, uh, let's show you this here. This is the IMDb of Sunset Boulevard. Still looks to be black and white. Yeah, screenwriter develops a dangerous relationship. The film star and determined to make a triumphant return. That's funny to think about. Like, <clears throat> there's probably quite a few movies about this back then of uh, like talkies versus silent films. 
Mm -hmm. You know, there was probably a lot of like little crossover shit. Like, remember me? I was in your favorite silent film. Yeah, I said it won four Academy Awards. <coughs> so it must have been pretty good. I feel like Academy Awards don't start meaning anything until like the late 60s. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Whenever movies were really good. They could just get away with anything back then. The number one um, movie killed it. I don't know shit about this movie. Mm -hmm. Have you heard what of this it? one? It's called All About Eve. Directed by haven't. Joseph L. Mechelix. Cleaned it up. In the, I mean, IMDb still has it at an 8.2 out of 10 with 140,000 ratings. It's a top 250 movie in of all time. Or the no, sorry. 3,000. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry 3,911 all time. It went down 250. Yeah. Still a so top 4,000 movie of all movies in the entire world. I feel like that's good. I feel like we'd be really disappointed in the top 10 list of, of all times. I kind of want to see but, that. But this is a it's a drama that says seemingly timid, but secretly ruthless. Ingenue. What's that word? Ingenue. Did I say that right? Uh, Eve yeah. Harrington in, insinuates herself into the lives of an aging Broadway star, Margot Channing, and her circle of theater friends in this Oscar winning story. It cleaned up, had all these awards, six, a bunch uh, of them. Six Oscars. Betty Best Davis, actor. Ann Baxter, George Sanders, Gary Merrill, a bunch of people on the road again. Merrill, where? Oh yeah, right here. <laughs> Miss Caswell. Hmm. Best picture, best director. It uh, it did did a lot of big things. I'm not gonna watch it. I bet you Goo has watched it, and if he didn't watch it, I guarantee you he would have done his uh, his homework for it. I'll we brought it right up. Now. I know we got to time travel back, but let's uh, let's travel back and then we can. I just clicked. You know how it said three thousand nine hundred. We can go yeah. through the real quick if you want the top five. Let's do the top ten or top five, whatever. Yeah. All right, let's All travel. Right. Back. Head back. The uh, going back takes less time. Yeah, you just for some reason. I just go ahead and just press it right here. Okay, okay. It was We're all back. warmed up. It was, yeah, still warm. <clears throat> still warm. I, I sat on it last, incubating the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do the top 10. According to IMDb, this is the chart, the movie meter. Uh, meter. I don't know why that came out. Movie meter. Meter. The movie meter. Uh, this, is, this is according to it, the most popular movies. Uh, and this is as determined by IMDb users. Are you ready for number 10? Ready. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which there's a lot of new movies on here. Is that one of the old ones? No, this was the new one, 2024. And that's considered which, a top 10 movie of all time? That's a by IMDb. And I don't oh, know how this is. Damn it, IMDb. Caesar's pissed. Well, see, see, I'm going ranking, but all of these movies are new. So I don't understand. Like all of them, 2024, 24, 24, 24. Oh, so that's I, horseshit. But then there's right. a 2000, 2023. They're all like brand new movies. So I don't know if we should even continue with this. Yeah, I feel like that's just more people. And this are... is the list. Yeah, I, I, and I'm just going to show you. This is what I did. So I just went here. See how it's like, oh, popularity. So I click that, and then it brought me right to here, the most popular movies. Oh, it's the popular movies. Popular. Okay, these aren't like the greatest. This is ranking. No, sort by ranking. This is the ones that were ranked. Then if you went by IMDb rating, it was different. There then we release go. date. We go. Let's, go, of, let's go by, go by the, the uh, IMDb this is the, rating. You want to go by the most number of ratings? Yeah, because that's going to be... The, the Shawshank makes sense. Yep, Shawshank was one. Interstellar makes... Okay. Yep, The Godfather uh, had... You know what I mean? This is the most rankings, not the highest based on their gladiator back to the future titanic deadpool mad max the shining dune part one once upon a time in hollywood but then if we switch it over to the actual highest imdb rating still have shawshank then the godfather interstellar dune part two gladiator back to the future the shining oppenheimer incendies top gun maverick which was way apparently high higher ratings than the original inside out people love that shit mad max jaws when was Kill. How many of those those movies have you seen? Seen Shawshank, seen The Godfather. I have not seen Interstellar. I haven't seen Dune. 
I've seen The Gladiator. I've seen Back to the Future. I've seen The Shining. I did not see Oppenheimer. I didn't see Incendies, if I'm saying that right. I don't know what uh, Incendies is. Yeah. Um, I did watch the newest Top Gun. I did see Inside Out with the kid. Uh, I did not see the Mad Max Fury. I've seen Jaws. Haven't seen Kill. Haven't seen Dune Part One. I have not ever seen Top Gun One. Yeah, I saw the first one and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna watch the next one. one." It has nothing for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, you gotta see Interstellar. I put that one up there. Is okay. That's, that's a baller ass movie. Yeah, but there's so many movies on the list that I probably should watch. But <laughs> that's our time. That's our time. We did it. That was fun. We made it through 1950. We found some positives. We shit out on it a little bit, but either way, that was pretty good. We're going to be back next week. Don't know what year yet. Depends on some video submissions. But again, if you guys want to submit one, you saw what Damon did. He just sent a quick 15, 20 second video, picked a random year. But I do want to say, if you do want to pick a random year, maybe reach out to me on Instagram or something first so you don't do a year that's already been done and we can't use it. That has happened. But either way, we're going to be back next week, fully staffed with a new year. Super excited. Hopefully you guys what, are enjoying what, it. What do, you, what do we do when we run out of years? I feel like that's going to take a very long time. Then we just have to start going into history, history. I mean, we, so, have, I mean to... we have from, let's see, what do we have? We have from 19, shit, 19. We have less than 100 episodes. 2023 to 1930. That's 93 years. Mm-hmm. So that's 93 weeks. I think yeah. <laughs> it's a long time. We'll well, just, when uh, that happens, we'll cross that road when we get here. We'll delete yes. the whole show and start over. <laughs> well, the beauty of being Triple T is we can time travel. We can be whatever by then. Hopefully people still watch it then. 93 weeks, come back. And yeah, you we'll got 93 re- weeks, bitches. Yeah, just or like we just 150 episodes of The Rage and Pillage. It. Go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> we just move on to something else. <laughs> I didn't think of that. That's a good idea. All right, just, now that we're going to ponder everything, we'll see you next week. Be good to your wieners. Keep your Limited time. On Limited time. Bye. From the streets to the block, jazz and beats rhyme so tight. We'll make your head nod. Triple T crew taking over the game. Y'all better applaud. Step into the cypher, feel the vibe. We got the style. Representing hip hop, going an extra mile. From East Coast to West, we break it down the walls. Triple T podcast. We here to answer the call. Triple T in the house is the call.